Okay, in this video tutorial we are going to look at active transport. So active transport is essentially uh, a means by which cells can transport um, substances against their concentration gradient. And because they're moving against the concentration gradient, the kinetic energy of the, the molecules themselves is not enough. Um, and so this requires uh, energy in the form of ATP. Um, and as hopefully you know, ATP um, is, is a form of cellular energy that's produced through cellular respiration. So active transport is the transport of substances against their concentration gradient requiring ATP, which is synthesized or produced through cellular respiration. Okay. <clears throat> so, key point there, against the concentration gradient. It's one way to identify it. Um, so active transport, minerals, some sugars, uh, most amino acids, um, move against the concentration gradient um, with an input of energy. So you see ATP here is required. And usually this involves proteins uh, that are embedded within the membrane. Um, and these proteins are similar in some way to enzymes in that they often have an active site or a binding site. Um, and the, the use of ATP, this energy, causes a conformational or shape change in the protein that pushes the substrate um, uh, across. Um, so that's, uh, just like an enzyme, they can be highly specific um, to, a, to the shape, um, to the geometry of a, a particular substrate, um, but rather than uh, acting as an enzyme to um, either break that down or link it onto something else, they simply push it across the membrane. Um, so key points against the, the concentration gradient requires that energy, ATP, um, but also noticing here that, that it often involves a, a conformation change, a shape change in this carrier protein. So these are often called carrier proteins, or sometimes they're called membrane or ion pumps. Um, and it's, so it's the change in their shape that actually pushes the, su the substance across. So, um, uh, another form of active transport um, is what we uh, refer to as bulk transport. Um, so there are, there are a couple of different types of bulk transport. Um, and bulk transport essentially is when uh, a substance is too big. So there's a limit to you know, small ions, things like sodium ions and potassium ions, things like that, uh, can be pumped across using the, these protein pumps in the membrane. Um, but some substances are simply just far too big. Um, so larger proteins, maybe, or carbohydrates, um, aren't going to be able, aren't going to be able to be transported through a protein. They're simply going to be far too big. So bulk transporters is transporting larger um, substances um, across the membrane, and and that occurs by packaging them into um, a membrane vesicle. So endocytosis is the first type. Endocytosis is, is used when macromolecules, macro meaning large rather than micro. Um, uh, too, too large to pass through the cell membrane. Um, so a, a portion of its membrane folds itself around, creating a pouch uh, that is pinched off inside, um, which be becomes a vesicle. So I hope we go down here to this picture. So this is basically a, a bit of the membrane here, um, pinches in, um, and you get this sort of this little pouch forming, which buds off completely. So you've got a little membrane bubble here, and we call that a vesicle, which can then transport these these substances. So endo means to enter, endocytosis, to enter the cell. So phagocytes, um, which are part of our immune system, use this to engulf uh, bacteria and viruses and, and destroy them. Um, they engulf the, the bacteria into a um, what's called a phagosome, just a, a special name for that um, for that little pocket. Um, and inside they'll have lysosomes, other small little bubbles that uh, contain digestive enzymes and acids and things. And that will fuse to the phagosome, um, and so basically it mixes it all the contents together, and the, the bacteria are killed um, and broken down by by the enzymes and acids and things that are that are in that lysosome. Um, and then any, anything of value is pumped out into the cytoplasm, and then the junk is, is expelled. 
So endocytosis and exocytosis are both the exact same things, but just in reverse. So endocytosis was taking uh, budding in to take a little bubble containing something inward, a vesicle um, inward. Um, so exocytosis is, is just the same process in reverse. Sorry, I'll, I'll go back. Um, if we go back up to the little picture. You could imagine here large molecules that need to be expelled from the cell, that the cell needs to get rid of. If, if you just imagine this in reverse, so this fuses to the membrane, uh, can be expelled this way. So exocytosis is how a lot of proteins and things are expelled. So um, in cells that secrete, um, secretions are often... Uh, they're expelling water, but they're also expelling um, often proteins and things. So if you think about um, in, in our nasal passages and, and, and in some of the passageways in the lungs, um, you've, you may have heard of goblet cells uh, are what secrete mucus. So the mucus that's secreted into the lining of the airways um, or, or into you know, our nasal passages and things like that, that mucus is secreted by goblet cells. Um, and mucus is essentially just a combination of, of water and, and certain proteins um, that are in there that make it more gelatinous. Um, and so those are excreted from these vesicles um, through what we often refer to as the, the secretory pathway. So any cell that's secreting things, um, you would expect to see lots of these vesicles, lots of little bubbles um, in, in the cell, um, and some of them may be fusing to the membrane and, and budding outwards like that. Um, so if you look at a, a goblet cell near its surface where it has the cilia, where the cilia are of, the, um, you know, of that layer, um, you'll see uh, lots of, of vesicles. Okay, so phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is basically when um, the cell ingests l large macromolecule. So you can think of this sort of like eating, so often bacteria or, or other. Um, so phagocytosis is, is really essentially the same um, um, as, as endocytosis. Um, this is taking up solid material. Um, so I guess it's a, it's a, it's a subcategory of endocytosis. Endocytosis is the general term um, used for taking in substances. Phagocytosis is referring to, to solid substances, so taking in things like bacteria. Um, so phagocytes do that to, to take in bacteria. Um, whereas the term penocytosis is, is the method of taking up fluid. Um, so that fluid may have dissolved ions or things in it, um, but it's, it's largely fluid rather than solid. Um, now sometimes, um, you know, with phagocytosis, you're going to get some fluid in there as well. And with penocytosis, um, you know, I suppose there could be a bit of, you know, it's probably sometimes a bit of a grey area in between. But uh, phagocytosis, generally, when we're, when we're talking about the uptake of, of a solid material, penocytosis, the uptake of a, of a liquid, um, may have dissolved substances in there, though. Um, and both are, are a type of endocytosis. So lastly here, exocytosis, the reverse, I mentioned that. Um, so basically, uh, exo meaning out, endo meaning in. Um, so this is how some contents are released from the cell. Um, they're packaged into vesicles uh, from the Golgi apparatus. Um, so uh, uh, if we look at, say, again, the goblet cell, proteins are going to be made uh, by ribosomes um, into the, the endoplasma reticulum. So anything that any proteins that get excreted are produced in the endoplasmic reticulum. A vesicle will bud off the endoplasmic reticulum and fuse onto the Golgi apparatus where some of those proteins might be packaged or modified. Um, and then a vesicle will bud off that and uh, make its way to the surface where it will fuse onto uh, the membrane surface and the contents are expelled. So exo meaning to exit here. You can see this is basically the exact opposite of endocytosis. So when antibodies are released from B lymphocytes, they use exocytosis to get the antibodies out. Um, and so, um, so that's how uh, B cells secrete those, those um, antibodies. And these antibodies are essentially protein. Uh, they're made out of proteins, protein chains. Um, and so they're, they're going via that secretory pathway that I mentioned. So um, the, the protein is synthesized on the surface of an of a endoplasmic reticulum into the endoplasmic reticulum, so by a ribosome, 
um, and then from the endoplasmic reticulum, it buds off a vesicle, goes to the Golgi, packaged, modified, buds out as a, as a vesicle again, um, and that goes to the surface and is exocytosed. So both endocytosis and exocytosis use energy, ATP, to transport molecules against the concentration gradient. So they're a type of active transport too. So just a summary there, active transport, always against the concentration gradient, requires energy in the form of ATP, which is synthesized through cellular respiration, um, often involves use of carrier proteins or membrane slash ion pumps. Um, bulk transport is the same thing, just the, the transport of larger substances, and that can be split into endo and exocytosis, so endo uh, transporting in, exo out, and endocytosis can be split into either phagocytosis, taking in solid material, or pinocytosis, taking in um, liquid uh, materials. Cool, so that's it, and that's basically the end um, of the, the cell transport um, oh, um, the cell transport um, and um, uh, cell membrane and transport unit. So I, I hope you found that uh, helpful.